if you're new to making beats, I know it can get overwhelming with so many things to do, so many things to know, and so many moving parts that you have to figure out. And that's why in this video, I'll simplify all you need to know in just five steps so you can be on track in learning how to make beats. And so if you're new, hit the subscribe button down below and let's get started. The first thing you need if you're new to making beats is studio headphones or speakers. And why this is so important is because the listening device you use while making beats affect the choice of sound. And this is why I recommend you start with studio grade headphones or speakers because they do not over high frequencies and you'll be sure of the quality and the choice of sound you'll be picking. And also you need to know that when it comes to making beats, you're only as good as what you hear. For my recommendations, if you're picking out studio speakers, try not to go below five inch speakers because you want speakers that have clear stereo image and also reproduce frequencies low enough enough for most of the sounds you'll be picking. And if you decide to go with headphones, I know there are many cheap alternatives, but try not to go below $100. While this may seem pricey at first, this will serve you for many, many years. All right, so now you have your studio headphones or your studio speakers. The next thing you need is a digital audio workstation. That is the software you'll be making your music in. Now, there are so many arguments about which software is the best, which, which you should get. Now, while I can say a lot about this, what I would typically advise that there's no such thing as best software, okay? Every software have their weakness and their strengths. What you simply do is you can download a free version of every software. Most softwares do offer a free trial, okay? Just play with them a bit, watch some tutorials and see which feels most natural to you. And then just go in, just dive in on it. Just focus on that. If it comes to you naturally, okay? It could be FL Studio, it could be Cubase, it could be Logic Pro, it could be Ableton, and there are many more other digital audio workstations that make quality sounds, okay? So these days, I don't think the software really affects the quality of your production anymore. What affects the quality of your production is you, what you're listening with, and your choice of sound. So if you can fix that, I don't think your software have a major role in the quality of beats you make. So just pick a software, try it out, keep learning, and move on. Now for the third part after getting a digital audio workstation, what you need are virtual instruments. Now what these do is that they help produce sound to make melodies, to make your chords and all of that. Okay, now there are so many, so many plugins you can get that make sounds, all right? Now these are also called virtual instruments, VSTI, okay, virtual instruments. And also they are split into two major categories, all right? There are some that make just a particular kind of sound. Let's say you want a plugin just for piano sounds. There are plugins that specialize on just a particular kind of sound. Or there are others that are a bit more general that have a little bit of everything, okay? So none is better than the other. They just have different use cases, okay? So you can check YouTube, Google, or make some research to see which plugins or instruments are popular within the genre that you choose to make. And as for how to get the plugins, they are all available online. They have their websites. Each plugin has its own website you can get it from. It's very easy. Just for example, if you want Purity or you want Omnisphere, just type in on Google Omnisphere website, Purity website. It will take you straight to the website where you can purchase the latest version of the virtual instruments you want. The next thing you need are kits are samples. Now, these are sounds that can be single recorded sound of an instrument, or they can be multiple sounds layered together, okay? It could be single one-shot sound, okay? Or it could be loops. There are other types of kits, for example, construction kits and MIDI kits. Now, what a construction kit is, is just simply a song that has been broken down into smaller beats for you to rearrange to make your own unique arrangements or production. Now, what MIDI kits are is just a pack or collection of pre-programmed notes that you can drag and drop on any instrument for it to make a sound. For kits and samples, I typically use Splice and producer sources. There are many other platforms you can use. You can even get from free platforms like Looperman or just search on YouTube as well. So the last but not the least thing you need is a MIDI keyboard. If you plan to make beats professionally, at some point you see that you need to learn some music theory. And one of the easiest ways to learn music theory is with a musical keyboard. And a MIDI keyboard just works easily with your laptop and your software, your music making software. It can also help speed up your workflow. Instead of clicking things one by one to hear a sound with a MIDI keyboard, you can just simply run through with your fingers to hear a sound. Now, I know you may have a little bit of struggle trying to learn it at first but if you just dedicate maybe a few weeks you, you don't need to know too much just the basics to get started you can take you a long way just know how to play a chord just know how to hit a few notes to make some melodies will take you a really long way so these are the things i think you should focus on if you're just starting out making beats but a bonus tip i'll share with you is stick to one genre and try to master a genre before you try to learn others for example if you really like hip-hop or you're trying to learn hip-hop just stick to hip-hop learn it well enough before you learn you know another genre 
Because if you keep moving across genres, you may not have enough time to learn the theories behind certain genres, okay? While a lot of genres share common musical theory, it's still important that you learn and master one genre first because that will also give you confidence to get a try at other genres as well. But it's nothing wrong if you're not sure of the genre you want to try. You just want to experiment and see what works. That's also fine. But if you are certain of a genre, just stick to one genre first, learn the hell out of it, in and out, be a pro at it, then start learning other genres. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more tutorials like this. See you soon. Cheers.